So, um, but yeah, so on university, uh, on the university, the info website, Ron, is what you're talking yes. about? It's universityofucadia.info. Yeah, the university dot u. Uh, oh, I see, I see, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're all there. Um, until Frank uh, releases the 18 other canons. <laughs> yep. So, so are they, they counting wrong? <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask you a question, Frank. Uh, have you updated yeah. uh, Positive Law with the two new sections yet? Uh, yes. Look, I've probably got about another half a day to finish it. Um, what I want to do is I want to finish the ca uh, Cognitive Law, which is on right now, and then there will be updates. Certainly the, the number of the canons will change because the Cognitive law means that it starts from the the numbers after after natural law. So um, the first uh, I don't know the first canons. Yeah. So all the numbers will be changing. So when it is, I'll be sending it across to you um, so you can put it into book form straight away. All right. Wait, I'm going to have to convert positive law. They'll they'll have new article numbers. Yes. Yep. Right. Yes, they will. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you, Thanks, Ron. Ron. Good on you. Thank you for that. Bye now. Bye. Or talk to you soon. <laughs> All right. Next question on the chat line here. Um, could you explain the age of majority, uh, the legal concept? Absolutely. People think the age of majority, well, firstly, the age of majority in their system is uh, 21 or 3 times 7. Uh, people think it's the age of 18. Uh, it's not. I mean, age of the majority appears to be um, the age of 21. But more importantly, they regard uh, majority also in terms of the uh, competence of mind. So it is discernment, or using a word that the Jesuits love to use, epinoia, is a word that um, is used to describe uh, the maturity of mind. So in their, in their system, while we've reached the chronological age of majority, 21, they argue we haven't reached true age of majority in mind. And so in that sense, we're still considered minors. So I hope that answers the question. Okay, then can 15-year-olds join Eucadia? Okay, if... The wording at the moment does not make that clear. I would, I, I believe that that anyone from the age of uh, 12, I would say, onwards, has the capacity to understand the terms and concepts of Eucadia. The why I make it a difference at the age of 12 is that um, there is, I believe, a time where um, children need to uh, learn and develop, that we, we need to set a, 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 an age that at least recognises an ability of the mind to start to comprehend. Now, it could be argued that there are super brain 10-year-olds and why make a, a, a line of sand? Some might say, well, that's too young. But I would suggest now in the age of the internet that certainly that age, if that's not clear, if there is contradictions in what I've said to what is written, then let me know. Let me know and we will fix those things up and, and, and clear it up, okay? Okay, Frank. So uh, in relation to the age of majority, then um, would you explain um, adult, the uh, concept of the uh, what is meant by adult? Then? Well, an, an, an adult, in their system, an adult uh, is an adult from age 18 which really is, is an age that they permit um, licenses uh, to be issued in many countries for certain things. Uh, in other countries, they won't let you drink. So, for example, you can drive a car, um, but you can't drink, as you know, in, in America to the age of 21. Uh, so the age of adult really is a, is a variable that some people see as the age of majority, but really it, it is um, uh, more to do with responsibility and uh, contracting. So, for example, uh, in many Western countries, they don't like to 
put um, children in adult prisons, albeit they now do that more and more. They're putting teenagers in uh, in prison. So the age of, of difference between being a, a youth um, and or being a juvenile and being an adult is really a determination of how the, how the system will deal with you. That's ultimately what it is. Okay, so then for adults in Eucadia, is there going to be a difference between their system and, and Eucadia? Well, in our system... In, and in the system of Eucadia, we recognize that there are chronological events of life and there are events of mind that need to be recognized progressively. So in the sacraments, we identify uh, from um, conception to birth, from birth to early ages, and we go through and we, and we define them by uh, a, a number of sacraments. And those sacraments are to celebrate different ages of life. Now, there are four sacraments. So we'd say Annunciation, Natal, Divinus, Adventus, Epinoia, Genius, Beau Ideal, Hagia Sophia, Adieu, Resolution, Remembrance and Veneration. are twelve apostolic life sacraments that every high order mind should experience, whether they're living or deceased. That's another difference between Eucadia and the existing system. If a child dies at birth, the journey doesn't die for them. If a, if, a, if a young child dies at the age of three, the journey doesn't end. That's the whole point, is to recognize that all minds should be given the opportunity to evolve through the stages and be recognized that they have gone through those stages. But in the middle, when we go through... Uh, the Benoia, Genius, Bo Ideal, and Hagia Sophia, um, starting at 21 to the age of 66, it's, it's the evolution and maturity of mind and competence that determines ultimately when they are celebrated. There's a minimum age, and then the age that it can be actually, actually celebrated is determined by the maturity and the competence of mind. For example, there's no point in recognizing uh, Epinoia as a, uh, a celebration uh, of the, say, the 21st birthday uh, as a coming of mind if the mind isn't there yet. I mean, there are, there are very mature 16-year-olds and there are very juvenile 21-year-olds. So there is a variance there. But anyway, they're the sacraments and, and with the sacraments, the clarity of those are being updated on the site. And like everything in this, if someone has an absolute concern that they're not happy with something, every piece of input is, is, is important. So I hope I, I clarified that difference there, Terry. Yes, very good. Thank you. Um, question real quick on from another one from the chat. Uh, we've got someone uh, requested to appear at court May 23rd and expect the lower court to behave badly with the EDP and orders. Is it possible to get the uh, process or get their case moved to the higher court? And what would you suggest there? Okay, so uh, two things come into mind. Um, one thing I, I want to be clear on, and I know this is not directly relevant, but I want to cover this first because it's not, it's not often covered and I should be saying this on a, on a regular basis. People have a mindset that because the magistrate's court is considered the first court, it's the best court to start testing if you want to resist the system. I, I would say to people time again, the magistrate's court in the way it was designed in the creating of the local government areas in the 19th century holds enormous power. It's also staffed by people who are wholly ignorant of the law. The clerk of a magistrate's court is the clerk of guardians. Going to a magistrate's court is effectively going to an independent medical hearing. It's not a court. The judgments have already been made. Your chance of any kind of remedy or relief is virtually zero. And the only chances is administrative 
And so in most cases, I would say to people, pick the issues in the magistrate's court very, very carefully because the magistrate's court can actually be a source of great angst where a parking fine can turn into a jail sentence. Now, in answer to the question of a lower court to a higher court, um, if the subject matter... Um, if the subject matter has to do with uh, behaviour or some kind of um, offence dealing with, um, um, I don't know, assaulting, it depends on the case. The EDP, again, is merely a claim of right. Uh, appealing to go to a higher court, uh, in most cases, the, um, where they lodge the court is where it will be heard. Uh, you, can change, you can ask for a change of venue, you can ask for a change of form of law, but in most cases, if it's a lower court and magistrate's court, they're not going to change it. So really, um, it really depends on what you hope to achieve. Um, if it's a fine, if it's... Uh, I mean, again, horses for courses. The, 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 the problem... The problem is the variables of the case. Is there any more information that we can get from this to, for me to be able to answer it more clearly as to is there the possibility of administrative remedy? I, I'd need some more information. But the short answer is I don't see... In their system, them changing the, uh, a case from a lower to a higher before a hearing is, is, is almost unheard of. It normally, there is, no, there is no raising to a higher court unless under appeal. Right. Well, it would have to be after the lower court does its deed, so to speak. Uh, That's that exactly right. Uh, yeah. Um, so it looks like uh, I'm not even sure if, if they're still on the chat. Uh, let's see. No, I'm not getting another response for any more clarity. Let's go back to Ron. Ron's on the phone lines again. We'll go to him real quick. Okay. Ron? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. Hi. Hi, Ron. I've been um, reading a lot of material on um, the increased sun activity. And <clears throat> remember a while ago we had, a, we had a chat about the four DNA strands that were left unconnected and that when connected you, you become more aware now, a yep. lot of these groups are suggesting that the sun activity is actually um, connecting the four DNA strands to let more people become aware. And um, <clears throat> remember that, that article I told you today about, uh, what's his name, Zygnu Brzezinski? He's yep. worried about the world becoming awakened. Do you yep. think it's because of the sun? Absolutely. And the earth? And the galaxy, okay, but especially the sun, and especially the earth. I mean, you're dealing with, you know, how how can you prove how deeply mentally ill the people in power are that they they think they can outsmart the sun, they think they can outsmart the earth, they think they can outsmart unique collective awareness and the divine. And they think they can cheat the dark forces that they claim to worship, which they really don't. I mean, how stupid can you be? And that's what you're dealing with. I, I mean, so that you, it's, they, they are severely insane, many of them. And by the way, it's not, just to, to put it in perspective, it's not the most senior and esteemed that are the problem. It's the next rung down. It's the people who've been the loyal lieutenants who look up to the the, the high priests and, and others of their system that are the ones that are rebelling because they're saying, no, nope, we, can, we can keep it together. Don't change. These are the ones that never did the hard yards, never read the history, you know, got to positions of, of influence but were never really the great. They're the second, they're the B, the C, the D great actors. They're the ones that uh, are fighting to keep it alive because they, they really believe that, you know, they're waiting for their time in the sun to be the great. And they're the ones that are pushing all these different agendas. And they are absolutely mentally insane. But look, the world is changing. 